Uh, Chris, before we kick things off, everybody that wanted to uh, just dance on the grave of the SEC when they were one and five in bowl season, nobody ever uh, the the idea of thinking that a conference is better or worse because of a record in bowl season, especially these days, is the most asinine thing I can possibly think of. Uh, the yes, opt outs, the circumstances surrounding these games, the opt outs. Uh, especially this year with the kids that were out due to COVID and, and whatever else, it, you can't get a gauge on any of this stuff this year. Like, there's no way to tell who's actually better. So uh, give me give me your thoughts because I know you and I both went at some people on Twitter that were just, you know, all oh, the Big Ten, uh, what was it, 4-0, 5-0, and, and SEC 1-5, and and then we see how it ends. And that's not to say that Arkansas was necessarily better than Penn State throughout the year. I think they probably were, but how could we possibly know based on the game that happened on New Year's Day? Listen, this is insane. This is all insanity. 13. 13 is the magic number that we need to talk about. There are most of these conferences out there don't have 13 teams in them. And the SEC got 13 eligible bowl teams. Okay? Yeah. And then I don't want to hear the bullshit of – you know, where you only play an eight game schedule, conference schedule, and everybody else plays nine. First off, Pac 12, Big 12, and the ACC, you all need to shut the hell up and, and just be appreciative that we allow you to be considered in a quote unquote power five. Okay. Because you don't, you don't belong in that conversation. The, the difference between the SEC and the Big 10 and the other three is a chasm so big. I mean, it's a, it's a nine-lane highway going down the oh, road. Yeah. It is. I mean, you can't cross that. You just can't. <laughs> You're don't 100% right. I, oh, just don't, I just don't want to hear we played nine games. Okay, so let's say, let's do some math real quick. Let's say, for instance, first off, five of the SEC teams were six and six. So if they were to play a ninth conference game, we assume some of them would have been against one another, right? So that means half of them. But here's the thing. Four, four out of those five teams that were six, no, sorry, I apologize. Three out of those five teams didn't play Vanderbilt. True. So so we assume one of them is going to play Vanderbilt and win. All right? So I'm going to give you one one of the five. I'm pulling them out. Let's say the other two split. I'm going to give you 50-50 on that, okay? But but now we're trying to play God. We're trying to play. You, you would have taken out a a uh, pay for win and replaced it with that. No, LSU probably wouldn't have played UCLA, and then they would have played one of these other teams. So I think at the end of the day, that's a game we lost anyway. Like <laughs> like South Carolina wouldn't have played Clemson, so maybe they play another SEC team. Well, okay, all right, a, a game they lost, they would have would have still lost. So it doesn't affect – there's a world where all 13 make it to begin with, no matter how you change this. But even yes. if thir- – 13 teams. 13 teams made a bowl game. I don't know how you argue with that. You don't. One team didn't. Yeah. No, it's – it's a, it, you're 100% right. Vanderbilt is the only team in the SEC that did not make a bowl game. A- and it wasn't all because of non-conference. Mississippi State lost uh, to Memphis in the non-conference. Like, I, Yes. I mean, what oh, no. are we? I, I think almost all the sixteen, all of the the five, six, and six teams, I think did lose non-con games. Auburn lost to Penn State. We lost to yep. UCLA. Mississippi State you was seven and five. Up, you just up but they lost. State, yeah, and you you brought up the Mississippi State thing. They were seven and five. I'm trying to think of the six and six. Uh, Missouri, I don't know who Missouri lost. Yeah, to. Missouri lost know, to Boston College. Okay, yeah. and then and then South Carolina lost to uh, to Clemson. So they all lost a non-con game. It's not like that would have changed anything. A hundred percent. 100%. So it's just the stupidest argument. Anyway, it, it, it all worked <laughs> itself out. And to say that we're not top heavy, every conference is top heavy. Uh, I mean, and the SEC Jesus. just happens to be more so. But that's partly because, look, you got the two but teams on, that are playing that's for the national But that's only those two teams are better than everybody else. Right. The, they're not the the gap between those two teams and and the and the rest of the SEC. It isn't any bigger than the gap between Baylor and Oklahoma and everybody else Agreed. in the Big 12. Like, the gap is the same. Those two teams are just that much higher. But 
So are our middle and bottom tier are that much higher. Now, our bottom tier is probably just as bad as everybody else. Vanderbilt's as bad as any team that that plays football at all. Well, it, everybody talked about South Carolina being awful, and you saw what they did to North Carolina. I mean, just, that's right. It, it, we who knows what to expect. And again, and that's with a first round draft pick playing on the other side of that field. By the way, you got that right. You got that right. Now, I don't know how many first round draft picks are on that North Carolina offensive line. I will certainly tell you that. Uh, but that's irrelevant. How many it's, how many it's players not. are on South Carolina at all? How many draft picks? Period are on South Carolina. Well, there were all? several that that actually opted out. Right? I mean, they I'm were down to played in the game. That played in the game. Oh, I, who knows? Probably not that many. Uh, Maybe, but one? they do have some Maybe. athletes. I mean, they got some guys that'll play in the league. Uh, I just right. don't know how many. I, I don't think there's a lot of first round guys. But South Carolina, I mean, get 100 percent right. And then we're not going to talk about them and not that game. But it, it's the same thing every year. Like we we see where the majority of the talent is located, and. To have this argument over and over and over again is just ridiculous. Well, just then one guy ridiculous. wanted to come at me. He was like, well, all of y'all bowl games are played in your backyard. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry that 90% of the games are played, like, south of the Mason-Dixon line and east of Texas. Like, I, yeah. I can't, or, or, you know, I guess, yeah, Texas eastward. No, like, none I, of it I has, it's not a home field advantage for any of those teams. It didn't have to do with any of that. No. It didn't have to do with any of it. That's so stupid. <laughs> I can't help it that the Big Ten chooses to go play in L.A. every year. I'm so sick yeah. of the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl was a fantastic bowl game, by the way. It really We're going to talk about it. Yeah. Unbelievable bowl game. I'm so sick of the granddaddy of them all thing. I've told you this for a decade. No team, no no bowl game that gets to have the Pac-12 in it, which has historically been fifth out of the Power Five. The, the, the ACC and the Big 12 have been considerably better than them recently. Like that, you just don't get to call yourself the granddaddy of them all. It would. So I've heard multiple people talk about this. Andy Staples most recently. How would you feel if the Rose Bowl was the national championship game? Nope. Every year? I don't want it. I don't want to. And here's the only reason why. This is now. This is a bad, bad move on my part. Okay. You <laughs> never want to make a decision because of spite or anger. But I don't want to reward the sons of bitches that put that thing on at all. They are the most Agreed. corrupt pompous pieces of shit also los angeles is not a, a, a the town that it used to be los angeles is True. absolutely not the place that you want everyone going to to celebrate your sport that's just not it i'm going to tell you if you were going to pick and you can call me bias you can call me a homer all you want if you wanted to celebrate your sport the sport of college football if you told me that you wanted to put it in miami our New Orleans every year and never move it from those two locations, I would be fine with that. I could get those down with that. Two, or maybe even those are, Texas. Like, no, I, no, 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 no. It needs to be in a party city. It needs to be in New Orleans. And the only reason New Orleans gets it is because there is no party like New Orleans. Party. It's, you, it's just no, you're not. right about that. All right, I'm, I'm curious. A, and and uh, South Beach South Beach rivals it, and South Beach has the beach. That's okay? a, you're right. You're but right. I'm not giving you Atlanta, and I'm not giving you Dallas. All right, those are beautiful stadiums. They're unbelievable places. But if you told me we're picking one place to put it forever, and we're not moving it, we're not playing this game anymore. New Orleans or, or Miami. That's your two options. And the reason yeah. Los Angeles loses it is because that's not the destination it used to be. No, you're you're not wrong about that. I am curious to see how things go uh, in Indianapolis next week. I'm sure it's going to go great uh, because it's, it's, it's great. a great town Indi- for that. It, and it's a great town there. It's a great football town. The Midwest is unbelievable. And yeah, it's a, it's an awesome stadium. So it's going to go amazing. Like, like there are going to be no problems with it whatsoever. Like that's not a bad answer. I'm not saying, yeah. you sh- I'm not saying you should give it a permanent destination. I'm saying because that pretty sunset, let me tell you something, six seconds after that sunset and it's just dark. That is now a shithole. Okay. Yeah, but like, if you want to do it, you need to make the sunset at the end of the damn game where you give out the trophy. You start the thing at noon. <laughs> yeah, because think, once the sun goes you're down, you're in a toilet. <laughs> I don't know if I would call Pasadena a toilet, but you know, I, I, right, Pasadena's not. But 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 where are your hotels and whatnot would getting be getting there, staying definitely. there, downtown LA, go enjoy <laughs> yourself. Tell me how it goes. See see what happens. Oh man. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, 
at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.